Good day and welcome to your yoga class. So today we are concentrating on the back, releasing any tension and strengthening it a little bit as well. So we're going to start today in child's pose. So knees together, feet together and bottom back to your heels as far as it can go. Head on the floor or on a block and the top of your hands on the floor next to your feet, feeling your curving spine. And just take a few breaths here to settle into your practice and to give that spine a lovely stretch. So breathing through your nose and filling up your lungs as much as you can in this position and just relaxing. So starting to think about coming up, taking your time. You've been down here for quite a few breaths now. And we're going to take advantage of this position that we're in kneeling to give a little stretch to our ankles to begin with. So just lifting your knees up, hands behind you, keeping your feet underneath and giving those ankles a stretch. But most important, we're going to lift our chest up to the ceiling. Really stretch that torso out raising the chest up and out rather than just out the way. So coming into a cross-legged position here, rooting your sit bones down into the mat, spine nice and straight. We're going to do some seated cat cows here, so hands around the knee area and you're going to inhale and pop your head up and your chest forward, exhale, feel the stretch between your shoulder blades at the back and bringing your head down. So try and get into a nice flow here. I'll show you from the side so, just so you can have a better idea. So inhaling a very small back bend, exhale, feeling that stretch in the back. And this should feel quite nice and really nice for the spine as well, flexing it forward and back. Really nice way to warm the back up. So coming back to a neutral spine, we're just going to do some twisting now. So popping your left hand on your right knee and your right hand behind you. You're going to inhale up the way and exhale, come round into a twist. Keeping that back nice and upright, we're not leaning back or forward. And of course doing the same on the other side. And this gives a really nice twist to the back, nice stretch in a lateral direction and that spine's getting a lovely twist as well, really nice and gentle. And all the while inhaling and lengthening and exhaling, coming round a little bit more if you can. So now we're going to come on to a tabletop position on your hands and your knees. Now taking that right foot out the back, have the heel up towards the, the ceiling there and even the back needs to do a bit of work to, to keep it up there. And we're going to bring the knee in towards the nose, okay? Then you curl your back a wee bit. So that's it. Exhaling, coming towards your nose and inhaling on the way back. And another one. Coming out to a nice straight leg at the end, remember. And then from here, pop that foot on the floor. And we're going to come in to a side plank. So coming onto the side of that right foot, raise your right hand up and we're in a side plank now. Now you can stay here if you want to or you can bring the bicep up above, you know, just beside the ear there and lift that right leg up. Okay, and then what we're going to do is curl the knee to the elbow and back to the position. So exhale, bring it all in. Inhale back out. Now you can just stay with the leg out straight or in that side plank position. This is just a strengthening exercise for you. And coming back to the beginning after you've done three. And then lowering down gently to the floor. Putting the tops of the feet in the floor as well. 
And what we're going to do now is a sphinx pose. So elbows on the floor. Now you can have a 90 degree angle like I've got here, or you can slide them out a wee bit if that angle in the back is too much. So see how you get on and relax your shoulders. Press your pelvis into the floor and press the top of the feet and the toenails into the floor as well. A nice back bend here, compressing the spine in a really nice controlled way and lowering yourself to the mat. And we're going to do some baby cobras here. So we're going to inhale and lift up with your hands off the mat. Really good for strengthening. And inhaling again. Exhaling on the way back down. And one more. Inhaling, coming up just as far as is comfortable for you. And back down again. Just pause there for a second or two. We're going to tuck these toes in. And you're going to come up to a tabletop here, then back into an open knee child's pose. So your big toes are together here, knees as wide as your mat or thereabouts, hands out in front and just relax. So not getting too comfortable here. Still got some poses to do. So gently coming up, giving yourself a bit of time. And we're back into that tabletop position and we've got to do the other side. So left leg out, remember that heel is flexed and feel free to stay in this position or bring your head down, trying to touch your nose to your knee. It doesn't actually have to touch. But we're doing three of these, curling in, strengthening the torso, giving the spine a nice curl as well. And having that leg out the back, you have to have a bit of strength in your back to be able to keep it up there. And of course, your glutes and your legs are, are working too. And remember, we're coming into that side plank. So pop that left side of the left foot on the floor, left hand up and stay there or lift the top leg and the top arms alongside your ear. And then we're going to curl in again, if you would like to do that. So elbow to knee, whilst keeping everything else pretty much stable, elbow to knee three times, just helping the balance with that knee that's on the floor. So coming back down into your tabletop position, we're going to come to the floor again and we're going to come up into that sphinx pose again. So top of the feet on the floor. Get those elbows in a position that suits you. Remember, you can put them forward a little bit and have your head up, shoulders relaxed. And just try and relax into it. Now, this time we're going to put our hands in by our rib cage and come up to a baby cobra. So leading with the back, the top of the back there. Your arms are staying very much bent. Your shoulders are relaxed. And you're trying to use your back more than your, your hands here. Head nice and elongated and bringing it back down after two or three breaths. So we're gonna come up to our first downward dog now. And because we're doing back tonight, we're gonna to try and give it as much of a chance to loosen off as possible. So keep those legs wide, as wide as your mat, and bend your knees, because that takes a lot of the pressure off your back, maybe, and makes it a little bit easier to access a really nice straight back and downward dog. So knees bent, feet out to the side of the mat, tailbone high, and your hands are still just shoulder width apart there. So we're going to walk up to our hands, try and keep your hands on the mat, but keep your knees bent and even rest your chest on your knees like I'm doing here and hold on to your inner elbows. Really let your head go here in ragdoll pose and you can sway side to side. It's just about loosening the back up eh, with this one. So the looser the head, the better. And just do whatever feels good here a wee. Wiggle with the hips can feel good as well, but really taking your time coming up, okay? Tucking the chin to the chest so that you don't get dizzy. So coming forward to the front of the mat, standing in mountain pose. So feet are together, heels are slightly apart, shoulders relaxed, hands facing the front, and just take a minute to check in as if there's a big bit of string pulling you up from the top of your head, nice long spine. And then what we're going to do is you're going to lift your right knee as far as you can up to your chest and hold on to the shin if you want, but really concentrate and grounding down with that left foot. So 
holding the knee up here, breathing, holding on to something if you need to as well. And while you're up there, you can circle the foot or flex it up and down. Sometimes takes your mind off the balancing. And then we're going to put our hands to our hips, try and keep your knee where it was, but we're going to then step that right foot back into a high lunge, okay? Now remember, we are doing back today. So whereas if your leg is straight at the back, that is wonderful. You can see there when I straighten the leg, it can cause a back bend, which we don't want. We want to drop the tailbone. So that back leg can be bent a little bit, just like that, and feel the heaviness in your tailbone. So play about with it a wee bit. And then you're going to tilt forward, just to strengthen the back a little more. Just be aware of that front knee as well, not coming in front of your toes. Keeping your breathing going and then pop your hands to the mat. Stepping your left foot back into plank pose. Now your knees can be down like this or up, but try not change the integrity of the front half of your body. The front half of your body should be in that same position. Really pushing into the floor and heels are pushing back and your feet are about hip width apart. Head nice and elongated, you're not looking down or up, it's just a nice, in a nice straight line there. Pausing for a few breaths, feeling the strengthening happening and then dropping to your knees, and keeping your elbows in, we're going to lower to the floor, okay, nice and controlled. And from here we're going to come up to cobra position, you can do the baby cobra like we did before, or full cobra but still not locking the arms out, then tucking the toes. And then you can come up to tabletop first or straight up to that downward dog. Now remember we're modifying it a wee bit. So your feet are mat width apart, knees are bent. And that just makes it much easier on your back. It helps if you struggle to get into that full down dog position, it does help take the pressure off your back. And we're gonna walk up to our hands again, keeping them on the floor, bending your knees and coming in. To that lovely ragdoll position to encourage the traction in our spine which basically means just encouraging a bit of space between the vertebrae so really important to be nice and loose here so starting to roll up again nice and slow vertebrae by vertebrae Then coming to the front of the mat again for that nice mountain pose, toes together, heels apart, nice and relaxed. Then it's the left leg's turn, so knee up, pause for a second with the knee up, then you can hold on to the shin and try and bring in as close as you can to your chest. That might not be very close at all, but as long as you're challenging yourself, because we are standing in one leg, remember, and rotate that foot back and forward both ways. And flexing up and down as well with those toes. And then keep trying to keep the knee where it is, hands to the waist, stepping back into high lunge. Now remember what we said, you're on the ball of your foot at the back here. And if you've got that leg straight, it can encourage a back bend, which we don't want um, for today. Bend the knee and tilt your pelvis so that your tailbone is coming down the way. And it'll encourage you to have a nice straight back. Watch that knee in front and we're going to tilt forward again, just like we did before. Really nice for strengthening the back, your back's having to switch on to keep you in this position. Then your hands are coming to the floor. You're stepping that foot back and we're in plank again. Do remember, you can put your knees down if you need to. Feet are hip width apart, heels are pushing back. And even if your knees are down, nothing much changes in the upper half of your body. Pausing here, feeling your back and your core and your legs and everything being strengthened here. Keeping your neck nice and long if you can down to your knees, elbows in and lower down with some control. Then pushing up into cobra position with nice relaxed el elbows and nice relaxed shoulders. Coming back down, tucking those toes again. And then what we're going to do is come back into a child's pose. So toes together, knees out to the side of the mat 
hands out in front and just pause for a few breaths. So now we are going to bring our right leg forward, right foot between our hands and we're coming into a low lunge. So back knees on the floor and all we're going to do is put our hands in our hips, okay? And we're going to concentrate on dropping the tailbone and lengthening the spine in this one. We are of course stretching our thighs as well. But just watch the front knee doesn't come in front of your toes and this is just strengthening because we have to stay in this position. And then bringing your hands back down again, tucking that back toe. And then what we're actually going to do is you're going to straighten that back leg somewhat and bring it behind that right leg. So your right foot is crossed over your left knee. So hug the right knee with a left hand, inhale, lengthen and twist round to the back. So pop that right hand on the floor behind you and you can look behind you can look to the side but we are getting a lovely twist and you'll feel this in your hip as well actually that right hip and really nice stretch so from there we're going to come into navasana pose boat pose so keep that chest really lifted keep that lower back protected now your toes can be in the floor like this holding on to your thighs if you want or thighs uh, are up and shins are parallel to the floor so crossing your legs we're going to come back into a tabletop position so just reposition yourself because that left foot's going to come forward and we're going to do the same on the other side so same as before back knees on the floor and you're just putting your hands in your hips and letting your tailbone drop and lengthening whilst of course keeping your hips nice and heavy Then hands coming to the floor again, tucking that back toe, doing the same as we did on the other side, bringing that right knee behind the, the left foot. So your left foot's crossed over your right knee. And what we're going to do is hug that left knee with the right arm, other arm behind us, lengthen and twist. So a really nice twist for the back here. Really nice for relieving tension. So again, coming round and coming straight into Navasana if you can. So remember your variations, but the chest is up so you can be holding onto the thighs or tips of the toes on the floor, but that chest has to be up, okay, to protect that lower back. You can straighten the legs as much as you want as well, but the most important thing is your back is nice and straight and your chest is up the way. So just bringing your legs down we're going to lie down on the floor now to so take a second or two to get your breath back and then we're going to do a reclined pigeon pose so left foot on the floor right ankle crossed over the left knee and send that right knee away as well now you can keep your foot on the floor or you can lift it up hold on to your thigh or even your shin as well but just relax and feel the opening of that hip
and then of course we need to do the other side but before that just bring your knees into your chest give a wee rock side to side gives the lower back a nice wee massage then we do the other side so left ankle over the right knee sending that left knee away even that will open up your hip and then holding on now your shoulders and head should be in the mat here okay so if you're in this position and they're up off the mat if you can't lower them down then just come back to the floor with your foot and just feel the opening So hugging the knees in again, rocking from side to side if that's what feels good for you. We're going to do a little reclined twist. So keeping the knees together, you're going to let them just come over to the left hand side and your hands are in a T position here. So please make sure your shoulders are on the floor. Your knees don't need to come to the floor, but as long as both shoulder blades are on the floor, you can look up ahead. The ceiling or you can look over to the right and this is really nice for just decompressing the back and same on the other side let them fall over to the right this time and you can look up to the ceiling or over to the left so a nice spinal twist just to finish off our practice today bringing the knees into the chest again and then what we're going to do is just before we have our shavasana, if you've got a block, you do not need to have one. But if you do, pop it under your sacrum and we're going to raise those legs. Now, they do not need to be straight, your legs. They can be bent. And also, this could be done against the wall, Viparita Karani. And what that means is that your bottom will be up against the wall and your feet will be up, up on the wall. Now, I'm holding on to the block here, but you can have your hands up ahead or on your tummy or whatever. And this is just really nice for giving the legs a rest. You're supporting the lower back as well. And just relaxing. Now, if this is really comfortable for you, you can have your Shavasana in this position as well. Just depends how much you like it. It is really, really nice. Um, and doing this up the wall for five, ten minutes will, will be lovely for you. Really nice for draining all the toxins out of your legs as well. So just coming back and taking the block away and getting into your Shavasana position. Get nice and warm with socks and things on as well. Relax with your feet out to the side of the mat. Flopping open, top of the hands on the floor. And just relax. Give yourself a moment to settle into the mat. Feeling heavier with every breath that you're taking. And this is your chance to click the save as button for your yoga practice. It saves all this good stuff that you've done, allows your body to restore and re-energise whilst not having to do anything else at all. And you're not doing anything special with your breathing, you're just breathing and being there just for the next few minutes. A few minutes of peace and quiet, letting your body get back its equilibrium and it's a nice rest for your mind as well. Knees bent and your feet flat on the floor, letting the knees fall in towards one another. Or 
sometimes putting a block under each knee can help that as well. Sometimes putting a block. 
legs straight out in front of you feels uncomfortable or feels like there's pinching in your lower back, you can keep your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor, letting the knees fall in towards one another, or sometimes putting a block under each knee can help that as well. Adjusting however you need to. So just letting your breath start to deepen, start to think about moving again, but no rush at all, because we've been lying for a few minutes now, and at this point it's really whatever makes you feel good. So that might be wriggling your toes and your fingers, that might be bending your knees or having a full body stretch, but take your time whatever you do. There is ab- we don't want to spoil this nice calm feeling and before sitting up just roll onto your side as a sort of halfway point and then come to a sitting position lifting your legs crossed and your hands at your heart and we're going to finish just by taking just a second to sit in stillness appreciate how your body's feeling now as opposed to half an hour ago And we're going to finish our practice with a namaste at the end. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, please like and share it and subscribe to the channel and you'll get all the new videos as well. And I'll see you again for the next class. See you later.